Hey, what's up everybody? I'm pretty stoked to bring you the disassembly of this Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. So the bigger version of the S6 Edge. I'm hoping the teardown will be pretty similar to that particular phone. We're going to use a few different tools for this. We'll be using a iSesmo opening tool. This thing is key in phone repair, so if you don't have one and you're repairing a phone, buy one. A blue nylon spudger, a Phillips screwdriver, small Phillips screwdriver, a couple guitar picks, and possibly a couple playing cards to help us take the back off of this phone. And of course, we'll also be using a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive on the back. The heat gun that I'll be using in this video is a hot air soldering iron. Uh, I've heard you can use a hair dryer. I actually had to get this thing pretty warm to get the back off. So you can also use just a regular heat gun. You can buy them at Harbor Freight for 20 bucks or so. Make sure your phone's powered off. We're going to go ahead and eject the SIM card slot. Make sure you put it in the right slot there, not that microphone hole. That removed, we can go ahead and get started on heating up the back of this device. Now I'm not going to use an infrared thermometer. Safe zone's probably somewhere under about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, really, uh, there's not too big of a risk of damaging the phone by doing this. Uh, you just want to make sure that you don't melt anything. So you just want to get it really hot to the touch. So we're going to start off across the back here at the bottom. So really the adhesive should be along all of the edges of the phone. And then on the past S6 phones, it was down here kind of a, a thicker portion in the bottom. So we're going to guess it's going to kind of follow that same pattern and heat up the bottom a little bit more. We'll be starting our entry in through the bottom, normally on the one of the sides. It's a little bit easier to get some leverage on the sides of the phone than it is just at the bottom. So it feels pretty warm. Let's take our iSesmo tool here. And really we're just going to use this to get started and then we'll use a, a playing card or a guitar pick. The tolerance on this are much higher than we've seen on some of the other devices. This thing really is kind of tricky to get into. So just trying to dip the tip in, but I just can't get any free room around here on the sides. So we'll just kind of try a couple different areas and see if we can't find a place where we can get this to sink in a little bit. Let's cool down a little bit. We're going to try to get it a little bit warmer. Maybe that's our problem. We can try using a suction cup as well to help us gain a little leverage on the phone. So same method of just heating it up uh, around the sides. You don't want to keep your heat gun in just one spot for too long. Uh, that's what would cause it to get too warm, possibly damage something. So make sure you keep it moving around. If you're just doing circles even, that's definitely helpful. So put our suction cup on here. Just try to kind of pull this away a little bit so we can't get it to leverage out a little bit. Wow, there's not much happening there. So we'll try that again as we pull. Let's see if we can't get our pry tool in there. I'm trying to be very careful. I don't want to damage this. Oh, there we go. You got just the tip in there. I'm going to wiggle it around a little bit. Now, the back, the paint on this thing is really easy to take off. In fact, I just dinged it a little bit there. So you want to be pretty careful. If you can open this with just a plastic tool, more power to you. That's what I would do. Uh, but I've never been successful enough to, to get it started without a metal tool more than just a couple of times. Especially on these uh, bigger phones, they seem like they have more adhesive across the back. So now we got that started. We got our playing card in. We're just going to go ahead and move it back and forth. Start to get that adhesive to loosen. There's a lot going on on the back of this. This adhesive is pretty thick stuff. It's almost like a, a, a foam tape than just a, a double-sided 3M adhesive. Oh, and my card just popped out. Looks like I'll have to use this ISS tool to get it started again. It's re-adhered itself. Let's try to suction cup it back and pull it back up. Try a playing card again. Suction cup can be pretty handy in these situations. Alright, so now we can go ahead and move it down the back. So really what you want to do is move it across the bottom here. Now I'm guessing that this very similar to the past phone. This does have the wireless charging in it. So that means there's a black mat right where I pointed out. So you want to be careful that you don't damage that. So we're just going to go down this, kind of the side here of the phone. 
And the back of this is glass, per se, but it's, it feels more like plastic um, in flexibility. Not, it does feel like glass when you touch it, but in flexibility, it's, it's pretty flexible for a, a thin piece of glass, so uh, you don't feel too crazy that you're going to shatter it completely. So our phone cooled down, so we're just going to apply some more heat. Now this is my first time ever opening this phone or any of these this particular phone, uh, so I'm being a little bit more careful than I normally would, which is taking a little bit longer. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Perfect. Just work our way down the sides here. You can see that I'm pulling up on the back a little bit. That'll help us get the tape off. See if I can't get a peek at where it's being held up. Right here, kind of in the middle, where is where it's being tricky on this right side. Try a guitar pick, something a little bit sturdier. So we can see if we can make a little bit more progress with this. You want to be careful that you uh, don't shatter the glass using something thicker. Right here just does not want to pop off. So we can take a peek in there real quick. See what's causing it to happen. Oh, I don't think you can probably see that on camera. There's a big thick piece of tape just right here. We're going to try to use our playing card to cut it. It doesn't want to happen. Let's apply some more heat and see if that doesn't help us out. All right, here we go. Go ahead and try a little bit harder here. I'll try this card. It's got a little bit more grip to it. See if we can't saw through it. Sometimes that does help trying to remove the adhesive. It just does not want to pop off. So we're going to take our tar pick and just push it down on top of that. Kind of slice it a little bit. There we go. It's a big, thick chunk of adhesive on this side, much thicker than the other side. Right, let's go ahead and start across the top here. We can start to pull this thing back. Perfect. Now we can see we've got the majority of it off. We're just going to try to pull it back a little bit, uh, just being a little bit careful not to damage it. There's a little bit more adhesive up here by the camera. And that'll let us go ahead and pull it off. Perfect. Now uh, you can see right here is where that big chunk of adhesive was holding on. Right up here at the top too, uh, there's a big thick chunk of adhesive all the way down this side. So here's the back of it. And the insides of the phone. So you can see, yeah, it looks almost exactly like you would see in uh, the other S6 and Edge series phones. But holy crap, there are a lot of screws in this thing. You can see all of these silver screws on the back of this thing have to come out. I turned the phone on accidentally when I was taking the back off, so we'll go ahead and just power back off again. We'll go ahead and get started. Now, I'm not going to speed through this. I know that uh, some people will fast forward, but I'd rather give you an idea of how long it takes me to do this and just make it look super simple and it takes you five minutes. Some of these screws are uh, not wanting to come out either. They're kind of stuck in their slots, so we'll probably just do a pair, a pair of tweezers and go back and just pull them out after I unscrew them. Now one other thing that I use is a magnetic mat. Uh, it's basically like a dry erase board with a big chunk of magnet behind it. Uh, that does wonders for keeping your screws in place. You can write down where they came from. Now luckily on the back of this phone, all of these screws are the same size, so it doesn't really matter which way you put them back in, as long as you get them all back in. Uh, the reason why you need to put all of them in is because it, there's contact points on the interior portion of this midframe. If you don't put them all in, then sometimes those points won't be making contact. The power button and volume button are two of the biggest things uh, that have contacts that make contact to the logic board. One other thing that you may want to do uh, before you start to repair your phone is I really cleaned the surface I was using. I used some alcohol, cleaned it off, made sure there's no dust, make sure there's no pieces of glass or anything else that'll be underneath that scratch your screen. Uh, 
All right. We're making pretty good progress. Just a few more screws to get pulled out here. We're going to grab a pair of tweezers and use this to kind of pull these screws out. You don't want to lose any of these things. Uh, sometimes when you uh, start to pull the mid-frame portion of the phone out of the back, these screws can go flying. And uh, we want to make sure we keep all of these. Sometimes tipping the phone back and just tapping on it will get some of them out. One risk with pulling tweezers out is screws can fly out at you um, if it slips out. So I would suggest not doing this on top of carpet. It'd be pretty easy to lose. Double check this one to make sure it's unscrewed all the way. So one benefit of making sure all the screws are out is you don't have any left that are... Oh, that one just flew. Just like that, actually. There's two really tricky ones in here that just do not want to come out. Uh, the one down here, the right of the charge port, feels like it's a little bit deeper inset, so you can't see the head pop out. I'll try to turn it upside down and pull those out. One nice thing is, is there weren't any screws hidden underneath any of the tape, which is a plus. Since I missed two screws on one of the last phones, I believe, I had to uh, figure out what was pulling back. Well, that's popped out pretty easy, actually. So you can see there's a charge mat, and you have to undo that. The phone just comes right out. So it doesn't look like there's any adhesive holding that uh, back portion on to the mid frame of the phone. So you can see in here we have our power button contact. We have our volume button contact, our loudspeaker down here as well. So this is normally the four points would be adhesive on it, but it doesn't seem like there's anything there. Uh, the phone has popped right out, which is kind of nice. All right, now we're looking at the interior portion of the phone. So we basically need to take this logic board out. So to undo that, we're going to pop off all of the connectors holding this in. So the battery, the earpiece speaker, this looks like the proximity sensor. Down here there's two uh, basic little antenna cables. These just snap off. Just be careful that you don't bend them. We have our display cable right here. And that should be all the cables that we need to remove to pull this board out. Right down here at the bottom, there's one that's going to hold it into the charge port. So we're just going to fold it open and then undo that cable. So just wiggling the board up and free. Normally the battery cable will want to hold this in, so you might want to pull that back as you pull the board out. Pull it forward just like this, and you can see there's a cable right here you need to detach. Perfect. With that done, we can go ahead and take the board out. You can see that there's the two cameras, the front facing and the rear facing. These just snap right off like all the other connectors in the phone. So if you need to replace those, uh, you can do that at this point in the video. All right, so now, looks like we have a screw right here for the charge port. Oh, man. The charge port cable actually houses the buttons, the capacitive button on the front, and they run underneath the piece of glass. So to remove your charge port, you have to take your entire front piece of glass off. That sucks. The other S6, uh, the originals, they didn't have, uh, the S6 Edge didn't have that. They was actually a separate board. The regular S6, you had to do that. So this is kind of a step back. I'm a little unhappy with Samsung about that. That makes the repairability of this phone uh, drop drastically in my mind. So everybody is up in arms about not being able to remove this battery. Um, but if you put a little extra effort into it, you can actually remove it. Now, there's not definitely not that hot swap, but if your battery does start to fade, uh, you can actually go ahead and pull it out. So we're just going to use our iSesimal tool, the flat side, and start to pull this battery back. Now, we're just doing this on the edge, because if this is anything like the other S6 Edge, there's a basically a hole underneath this battery where you could pry directly onto the screen, and we don't want to do that. So let's pull it right here on the edge. We're just going to pull it back and loosen the adhesive that runs down both sides of the battery here. You can start to fill it, pull it away. We're just taking our time. It's getting to loosen up for us. You also want to be careful that you're not bending the plastic of the frame here as well. So I'm not pushing extremely hard. I'm just kind of pulling it up, letting the adhesive let go.
So any spudger should be able to help you do this, or even a plastic one. This ISESMO is just so thin that it gets in there nice and easy. Now, in the last phone, there was a place you could slide your spudger in just right here, but unfortunately on this phone, uh, it doesn't look like there's much of a spot. Actually, there's a hole right here underneath the connector, but you're going to want to be extra careful you don't damage that. So we've got it in there. We've got the adhesive loosens. So we're just going to push our spudger down the side of the phone here and start to loosen this adhesive up. Now again, being very careful, I'm not putting a ton of force in this. So we got one side undone. So now we can probably just pull it out. It's being nice and gentle as we do it. It's pulling back. It's still making contact with the mid-frame. You can see right here is the hole I was talking about. And there's our adhesive that runs down both sides of the phone. Now we have the battery out. Now there's a few more things we're going to remove. We're going to re remove the proximity sensor, the earpiece speaker. Proximity sensor is just adhered in uh, with a cable, a little tiny bit of glue. So we're just going to pull the cable back. And then we'll also go and pull it out. This is a little adhesive around the proximity sensor here. We can remove the earpiece speaker just using our spudger. Can't get the tip underneath it here. Now this is a good spot. It's not in there with a much adhesive, so we can go ahead and get that out and set that aside. Now with the charge port being adhered to the underneath the screen, I'm not going to be able to remove that cable. This right here is your home button, which also to be replaced, you have to remove your screen as well. We can remove the vibration module here and pull that out. Now if you're looking to really replace the screen on this, I'm not going to do that in this particular video because uh, last time I pulled the screen off of a phone I damaged it and uh, the last S6 Edge screen that I pulled off, man, those things are adhered on there. So really, unless you're going to be replacing uh, your charge board or you're going to be replacing a broken screen, it's really not worth removing the screen. Uh, so we're going to leave it on there. I'll eventually buy a broken S6 Edge Plus, or maybe I'll break this one, who knows. And then I'll make a video of, of that uh, screen assembly change. Uh, so check back and I'll see uh, when I get one of those, I'll post it on here as well. Now it's basically the same process. If you're looking to replace your screen uh, as the S6 Edge, I have a video on that. You can check it in my channel. I'll try to throw it down in the description as well. But you're going to heat up the top up here and basically take a card. And you want to loosen up all the adhesive that's holding the top of this on. And there's an adhesive that goes down the sides of the phone as well. Now the reason why I'm suggesting a playing card is because it'll bend around the curve of the edge, uh, which makes it a little bit easier, especially if you're trying to save your screen. Then down the back here, just down the sides, there's going to be adhesive. Then right here across the buttons, there's some adhesive as well. Now once you get that kind of loosened up, you're going to heat up the back of the phone, take your playing card, and basically stick it in. Anywhere you see this copper color underneath here, it's basically, that's adhered to the midframe of the phone. So all the way around through the interior portion of this device, this LCD is stuck to the midframe and taped in. So um, I'm not going to risk removing it. Um, but again, as soon as I get that video, I'll pump it out to you. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Now, if you want to see how to reassemble this, how to reattach the back cover on, I'm going to make that video. I'll link that down in the description as well. You can see right here where that cable wraps around. That stinks, Samsung. Come on. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you want any future videos, hit that subscribe button. If you have questions, throw them down in the comments. I'll do my best to get to them. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. I'd appreciate it. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.